Hey guys, 2.3 continued. I want to talk about function notation first, okay? So maybe you've seen this before, this f of x, that's how we say this. It's literally the same thing as having a y. It's just saying, hey, by the way, y is a function of x, okay? So we usually use f of x. This is not f times x. So what this means, the way you can kind of think of this is the independent variable inside is x, that's things that we plug in, okay, that we plug in, we're going to plug in for the x values. The function name is here, so we're calling it f, we could call it g, we could call it h, and this is the directions, okay, it tells us what to do, okay. So what I really want to point out is this, f of x equals x plus 1, is the same as y equals x plus 1. It's just saying, hey, by the way, it's a function. Every single one of its inputs that we put in for x will give us a unique output. Okay. So for example, let f of x be negative 3x plus 4 and g of x equal negative x squared plus 4x plus 1. And we want to find the following and simplify. Okay. So let's start with f of negative 3. What this tells us is we're going to put in negative 3 for the x in f of x. So this will be negative 3 times negative 3 plus 4. So notice for f of negative 3, I wrote the same exact thing as f of x, just replacing the x with the negative 3. And that's what we do. That's why this is kind of our set of directions. Now we want to fully simplify this. So this is 9 plus 4. This is, of course, is going to be 13. Okay. Let's look at another one. F of negative 7 thirds, same idea. Negative 3, wherever I see an x, replace it with negative 7 thirds plus 4. If I simplify, these are going to cancel. A negative times a negative is a positive. So this is just 7 plus 4, which is 11. So that tells me f of negative 7 thirds, when x is negative 7 thirds, the function value, or the y you could think of it as, is 11. g of 0, so now I'm going to use g, okay, and I'm going to plug in 0 wherever I see an x. So this is negative 0 squared plus 4 times 0, once again replacing the x, plus 1, simplifies to 1. What if I give you something that's not a number? What if I say f of negative x? Well, based on what we've been doing, that probably means I go to f of x and replace all the x's with negative x's. Okay, so I'll do that. Negative 3 times negative x plus 4 is 3x plus 4. That's fully simplified. I can't combine any like terms. And finally, what if I have something like f of a plus 4? So based on what we've been doing, I guess I'll take a plus 4 and I'll put it in anywhere I see an x in f. So this is going to be negative 3 times a plus 4 plus 4. I want to fully expand and simplify. So this is negative 3a minus 12 plus 4. That, of course, is going to be negative 3a minus 8. So this is how you evaluate functions. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about one of the problems in the book. So we're going to look at number 74 in the book. I'll get my book right here. And this is the one that I want to look at, 74 right here. Okay, and what this says is find f of negative 2, f of 0, f of 1, and f of 4. Okay. So let's look at our graph. We're looking at this one right here. It is a function. It passes the vertical line test. So just like we can put these in algebraically and evaluate them, if I don't have an equation, but I do have a graph, I can figure out what the function values are. So let's start with f of negative 2. Okay. So f of negative 2, if I'm looking at this graph, that is when x is negative 2, right? Because this is y equals f of x. So I'm going to look for negative 2, and I'm going to find the corresponding y value. In this case, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. f of negative 2 is 5. So essentially what this is asking when they say, hey, what's f of negative 2? It's saying, what's the y value when x is negative 2? What's the value of the function when x is negative 2? 
So let's do the next one. Let's do B. B asks for F of zero. So F of zero, when X is zero, what is the function value? What's the corresponding Y? That's also zero. Okay, so you can kind of see how this is going. Let's try C, okay? C, they want to know what F of one is, okay? So if I go to one, it looks like the Y value is two. So if the Y value is two, F of one is equal to two. And finally for D, they want to know F of four. So when X is four, F is one, two, three, four. The function value is four. The Y value is four. So this is how you figure out function values based on a graph. So we've done algebraically and graphically. I want to look at one more in here. I want to look at 82 in the book, okay? So 82. 82 says an equation that defines y as a function of x is given. Rewrite each equation using function notation, f of x, and find f of 3. So what they give us for uh, f of 2, or sorry, for 82, is negative 2x plus 5y equals 9. So this is an implicit formula. I don't have y all by itself. If I did, I would just replace y with f of x. So here's what I'll do. I'm going to solve it for y first. So I'll add 2x to both sides, and I'll end up with 5y equals 2x plus 9. I want to get y by itself, so I'll divide both sides by 5. So I could write it this way, or I could write it 2x over 5 plus 9 over 5. Both are correct. Once I have y, like we said, f of x is the same as y, it's just saying, oh, by the way, it's a function. So to write in function notation, the answer to a, it's just 2x plus 9 over 5. Okay? So to be able to, the, the point is that with this, is to be able to write a function in functional notation, you have to be able to solve for y. Then you just replace it with f of x. Now the next part they want to know is they want to know what the function value is when x is negative 3. Okay. Oh, sorry. I guess that's positive 3. Okay. So what do I do with the 3? I just put it in wherever I see an x. So 2 times 3 plus 9 divided by 5. That's going to be 6 plus 9 over 5. 15 over 5. Or 3. So graphically, so yes, the function value when x is 3 is 3. Graphically, that tells me when x is 3, the y-coordinate is 3. Okay. One last thing I want to talk about is increasing, decreasing, and constant functions. Okay. So suppose that function f is defined on some interval i, and x1 and x2 are in i. Okay. I'll back up a little bit here. It says that f is increasing on i if when x1 is less than x2, f of x1 is less than f of x2. So when the x is less than this other x, that y is less than that y. Graphically, if you look at a here, that's what's happening. And it has to be true for all x1 and x2. So if this dips somewhere like this, then I couldn't say it's increasing on that interval. It has to strictly be increasing the whole time. Same idea with B, F decreases on the interval if when X1 is less than X2, F of X1 is greater than F of X2. That's the picture that I have right here. Okay, and it strictly has to be decreasing the whole way. Finally, it's constant I if for every X1 and X2, F of X1 is equal to F of X2. So that's something that's flat. Notice f of x1 is equal to f of x2 for any x1 or x2 I pick in here. Now this may seem, okay, yeah, it's pretty basic, but it does come in handy, especially when you get to calculus. So we want to make sure we understand how to categorize some of these functions and these intervals. So for example, I drew out a function right here. I called it f. And the question is, when is the function increasing, decreasing, and constant? So I can see that it's increasing from here, and I guess that's going on forever since there's an arrow there. So I'm going to say increasing from negative infinity 
And we're talking about the X values in which it's increasing. So we scan it left to right, and it looks like all the way up till X is negative one. Now at negative one, it's just that point. So I never include that endpoint right there. So it's increasing from negative infinity to negative one. I'm looking at the X's. When is it decreasing? Well, from X equal negative one to X equal to zero. So negative one to zero. And when is it constant? Well, it looks like it flat lines out from zero and then it just kind of keeps going. That's what the arrow tells me. So constant from zero to infinity. So that's how we would categorize when this is increasing, decreasing, constant, any of that kind of stuff, okay? All right, that wraps up 2.3.